Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Gaming It Out. You can call me Giggs, and today I'm going to share with you what I have found out about structural integrity uh, in Valheim. I have spent a lot of time building in this game, and I've spent a lot of time doing it wrong. <laughs> and I've, I've, I've sort of started to figure some things out. So again, I'm certainly not an expert on the subject. And if you have any information that I don't touch on, or if I get anything wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments, because I'm really, the goal is to get the information out there correctly. So if I'm wrong, or there's something I don't, I don't say, and you know it, put it in the comments below. More information is always better. Uh, I've built this funky looking structure to demonstrate a few things about what I've discovered about structural integrity, and I'm really hoping we can get through this without the, the forest is moving happening, because it's happened every single day. <laughs> for the last four or five days. Uh, it's really getting old, but let's talk about this. We've got the color system that lets you know kind of the stability of a particular piece. So we're using two, the, uh, the two meter beams. There are other building pieces you're gonna get to later, but for now we're gonna be talking about the two meter beams. Blue is foundational. That, that means it's connected to the ground. It's the strongest it can be. In, it, it's it's what you want to focus on when you're laying out the the outline of whatever it is you're going to build. Blue is as strong as it's going to get. Okay, let's go ahead and repair that. Now, if we come up the 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 pattern, we've got our dark green, and since we're building straight up here, they're both dark green. Then it's a little bit lighter. Then it's yellow. Then it's kind of an orange. Then it's red and up there is red as well. Now, there's a couple of instances where the, the shades are only slightly different. So if we come up here, you'll see if I if I mouse back and forth between these, it looks like the, the one under it is just slightly less red, right? It's pretty close. It can be hard to tell. As far as I know, I'm not colorblind at all, and I have a hard time differentiating. Same with these. You can tell that the one on top is, is slightly lighter green than the one below it, right? It I almost think it would be worth implementing a couple more colors into the system just so that it's a little bit easier to differentiate. Um, but for now, this is what we're working with. Th this is falling apart so quickly, by the way. I, th I think how well it's built has something to do with how well it lasts. But anyway, that's the color coding system. That's how you can tell the, the stability of a particular piece that you're placing. Uh, you can tell I've tried to do this a few times and we've been having trouble with that forest is moving garbage. <laughs> and now my pieces are falling apart. Um, now, this straight line is eight up, right? Eight pieces high, including the foundational piece. If you come off the foundational piece one out, you, you can still total eight pieces okay so we've gone up one out one so it's one two three four five six seven eight right we still have eight pieces total including the foundational piece and you can do this in every direction that you can place a beam right so every tick of the spin i could do this off of this one piece and it would all hold up okay so it's not about necessarily the load that it's bearing it's about where pieces are in relation to a particular piece. So again, I could I could recreate this design, this this one off the foundation and and seven up or six up, I'm sorry. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I could do that at every single tick that this thing will spin and that one foundational piece would hold it up. Okay. When you come out two pieces, I'm gonna repair these as we go. When you come out two pieces, you take a penalty to the amount of pieces, right? So we've got our foundational piece, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one less piece, and that one's red. If we put anything on top of that or try to build out from that piece, it's gonna break. And that's because we're two out horizontal. So now it's weaker, right? Further out from the foundational piece means weaker. Two and three net you the same pieces, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's one shorter, but it's one further out. But but between two and three, we're not taking any more of a hit to the amount of pieces that we're able to build from the foundational piece. 
when you get out to four, you do take a hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Take it, you take another hit there. So again, I could do this in every single direction that one of these beams would, would turn and that one piece would hold it up. Floors. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to repair. Hang on. Because it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Floors work the same way horizontally as the beams seem to. So we've got the foundation piece here, and then we've got one, two, three, four. Same as the beams, one, two, three, four. If I try to build out anymore, it's gonna collapse. If I try to build out off this floor anymore, it's gonna collapse. Now, what I've noticed is that going up, it's a little bit different. We've got the foundation, and then we've got the floor that's connected to it. One, so the, including the, the blue foundation piece, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So for whatever reason, you can do a little bit more. Not that you would structure anything like this necessarily, but I figured it was worth showing off that, that when it, you're dealing with floors and beams mixed, you seem to be able to get a few more pieces in the mix. The diagonal beams do offer some help in the way of connecting pieces to the foundational piece, right? So if we look up here, that piece is red. If we take a couple of these, they count as two. The, to, to my best estimate, they count as two beams, right? And they cover the same distance, so it, it, it sort of serves the same purpose. I'll show you one thing with the beams that I, that I find a little bit odd. But now, if we count it as two, we've got our foundation piece, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you'll notice that now it's orange, which means we could go up one more and it would turn red and then we would be at our peak. So so we're able to go a little bit, we're able to cover, cover more ground using the diagonal beams, which is why this base, we, we started it with the beams and you'll notice everything's green out here because again, they, they count as more pieces. You can actually go five high. I, I tested this earlier. I, I won't make you watch me build a ladder and do it, but if you place one like this and it's blue, you can add four more to it before it turns red and you can't add any more. I don't know if I can get up there, but if I built a ladder up there and, and built one more on it, you, you, you can tell by how dark that is. It would turn red. So you can build five of those high, and then if you met in the middle... Uh, so, so you could build a pretty substantial base like this one. Like, you could make a base bigger than this one using that, that principle, right? So, that is a glimpse at kind of what's possible. This is all coming off of this one piece. So, theoretically, <laughs> we could come down here and we'd have to build floors because it's hard sometimes. Actually, no, we wouldn't. We could do this. We can go, uh... Sounds just kind of aggravating to get a floor to snap to one of these. I'm going to see if I do something like this. And then place a floor. And then now, if I destroy that, if the floor stays on. The floor does stay on. Okay. So, yeah. So, if we make that the center... And all of these floors connect to a foundation. Then we should be able to build this out. We're going to try to come out two more wide in every direction. And see if it holds up. This is kind of the, the, the testing part. Now, now I just want to see... If kind of what I'm thinking is right. I've, I've given you all the, the numerical information I've obtained at this point. We've got that. You know what? We'll keep it for the sake of going with walls and a roof. We'll keep it two out. Cause that's that's still not even really a bad size, honestly, if we're talking about the base, right? So we'll go one more out this way too. Okay. 
Okay, now let's throw some walls on it. The question is, what is up with this board? I guess it's all good. So we're going to build this entire 4x4 four four base on one. Here, we'll come out here and we'll throw some stairs down. And again, that's going to kind of add to the foundation a little bit. Come back and uh, just, just, just for gigs, just for giggles, we'll throw that there. Now we'll do uh, we'll do a short roof again because if I want to get on top and and work with it, I can get up there without sliding off. That'll be nice. Snap on up there. Snap on up there! So it just seems... I mean, you know, it, it's fine. It is what it is. But this is interesting that, that this whole base... So there you have it. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad starter base. If we're going to be real about it, and it's all sitting on that, and the stairs do not have anything to do with the support of it. So that's all sitting up on one beam. So this gives you an idea of kind of what you could do off one beam. So now you would know if you wanted to throw beams at the corner... Right? Now you could kind of recreate what's between this beam and this beam in every direction. So now you kind of, you'll get an idea of what your foundation needs to look like. You don't necessarily have to use the horizontal beams for support. Just get these under there, and it gives you a good, you get a good idea. I mean, like I said, that's that's not bad. If you If you like an elevated base... And I mean, at this point, here, let's do this. Let's let's just get, let's go ham with it. We'll break this out. I'm gonna need some stones. Here, we'll throw some stairs back. We don't have to keep jumping. Oh, go on, snap there. There you go. We'll take our hoe. Do I still have my hoe on me? I do. We'll take our hoe. We'll raise this up, like Josh Groban, you know what I'm saying? And then maybe maybe smooth that out just a little bit. No, sometimes it's, it's a little finicky. Go up in here maybe, like that. Smooth that out. Okay, that, that'll, that'll probably be sufficient. Do we still have enough stones left to get away with doing this? We do. Put a couple pieces of wood in it. We will... Break that out. Bam. 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 And I think, based on what I've kind of played around with, with the chimney, I think you want it at least three high. Or you're going to have issues with it just randomly putting itself out because it's being smothered. you got, you got to be careful not to smother your fire. So we're going to come up here and we're going to bring up the chimney one more. We'll put a wall there. There. We'll throw this up there. Wherever we can get it to snap. I don't care. I'm not picky. I'm kind of picky. Come on now. Get up there. I know I know we can get that to snap. There we go. Now it's covered, so it's good from the rain. We, we, we'll go over this in another base building video, but I figured why not.
So here you, I mean, you've got a base here, right? You can put your, your cooking rack over that. You can put your bed in here. You can put your chest in here. And it's all <laughs> on one support. And actually, we brought the ground up, so it probably added to the support a little bit. But I don't know. Just some, some, something kind of goofy I thought we would do. Hopefully, you learned something from this. Again, it, there, there, I'm sure there's a lot more to the system. And you'll as you get through the game and unlock more pieces, you start to get things like log poles that are four meters long. And they probably offer different, right? There's probably different things you can do with those. But this is kind of a basic introduction to sort of what's possible with the with the two meter beams and uh, and yeah, a little starter base you can build up on one support. So again, hopefully you got something out of this. If you have information that I did not cover or anything that I got wrong, again, please drop it below. More information is always better. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this, and we will be back soon with some more Valheim. So if you like this video, I would appreciate you liking it and subscribing and all that jazz. Uh, until next time, have a good one.